Hey guys, it's Promethium5 here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the acetone vapor technique I've been using on my Prometheus Rising Heavy Industries 3D printed mecha action figures so that I don't have to uh, putty and sand all the parts anymore. We're going to be looking at some all-arounds that I'm working on today. Um, these are not it. These are the last of the old all-arounds that I did using putty and sanding. You can see, you know, you can get a pretty smooth finish on there with putty and stuff, but not perfect. And to go any farther, I'd have to do a lot more work than I really, you know, have time to put in. So I was trying to find other ways to do this that wouldn't require so much sanding. And thanks to the uh, RepRap guys on their site, there is now a better method. Uh, these are the tools we're going to be using. This is a, you know, a hardware store, pure acetone, and adjustable temperature hot plate. This is actually the kind you would find in a, a bio lab. Um, I figured I should buy one that was, you know, an adjustable temperature and actually has an adjustable uh, magnetic stirrer too if I ever needed to use it for other stuff. But we don't need all that today. And then this is my glassware, just a big, uh, what is this, a 2,000 milliliter uh, beaker. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in, oops, plug in the hot plate and start preheating the jar. We'll do that here, so we'll put the, jar, the heat on. I'm just going to start off low, like, you know, two, two and a half there, and put the jar on. So the jar will start to warm up before we put any acetone in it, because I want it to, you know, not have to sit there and watch all the acetone heat up. And this is a little, just a metal rack thing I made to fit in the beaker. We'll use that later. We're going to start off over here, though. I figured I'd walk you through the entire process, you know, from the printer to the finished figure. So these are some parts for an all-around that are fresh out of the printer, still on the plate. You can see that they've got their support material in their raft and everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these guys off, and these are my tools for that. I have a uh, trusty spatula that actually came with the printer kit, uh, a little flush cutter that I use to kind of grip the support material, and a sharp exacto blade for any stubborn pieces. So I'm just going to mount my camera here, make sure you guys can see, and taking the parts off is pretty easy, you just uh, get the spatula under there, and the parts pretty much pop right off. The uh, the up mini is interesting because it comes with a, well, actually I guess both up printers, instead of coming with a flush piece of material like a polycarbonate or a glass or something, um, and having the raft on there where sometimes it's pretty prone to warping, the up printers actually come with a piece of perforated material that has uh, it, it's it's like a PCB type material with holes in it. So the first couple layers of the raft actually squish into the surface, into the holes. So they uh, have kind of a mechanical join there, which helps prevent warping. That's pretty helpful. And they, they still just, I mean, they come right off just you know a little convincing from the spatula. That's not a problem. Here. All right, so all the parts are off. Let me just take these out of the way. Most of the support material and the rafts come right off. I just I use the uh, the flush cutters instead of a pair of pliers because I find they grip a little better. And you can see right there, the raft just pops right off. Just get this little bit of support material out between the fingers. And there you go, we've got a complete, ready-to-go part. So I'll just uh, put this on fast-forward and blow through these parts real quick, and then we'll go look at some other parts that I already have ready for the acetone process. So enjoy watching a minute of me quick clean up all these parts.
and we are done. As you can see, we've got all the parts for an all-around now. We've got, uh, you know, arms, legs, torso, and the parts come out pretty clean, even from the up. I mean, there's a lot of glare that you can't really tell, but um, the parts are, you know, plenty clean, but they do have a, you know, a ridgy surface on them, so to take the next step, we really do want to uh, get rid of that. Uh, right, so just going to take this here. I already have a couple other all-arounds already mounted on skewers for some of the parts with no good flat surfaces or that are kind of chippy. And then the rest of the parts over here uh, ready to go. And you can see here that the uh, plate's getting pretty warm. So I think we are just about ready to uh, get going here. So we're going to talk about some safety precautions first. Um, we are working with acetone, which is flammable and liquid and vapor form, so there's no reason to uh, have it be on fire while we're doing this, but we just want to be careful. So I'll be wearing some safety glasses, you can see those guys there, and uh, my handy solvent proof uh, spray mask that I use for my um, uh, airbrushing, so this is good for lacquers and stuff, it has um, organic filters on it, so that's all well and good just to you know be extra safe so I'm gonna put this down for a moment and get all suited up and make sure you guys can see the action when it happens that should be a good view right there So I've got my mask on now, and we're just going to test to make sure that the uh, sorry, make sure the beaker is actually hot enough. I have my acetone. I'm just going to take an eyedropper, a uh, you know polyethylene eyedropper that's solvent proof, and test the acetone, the uh, heat of the thing. So I'm just going to take you know like a milliliter to start and. You can just hear it starting to vaporize. We probably need to just wait another moment. We'll test it now with something that's kind of disposable to make sure. So, I have a couple extra all around leg pieces that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to uh, put them on some tin foil on my rack. There's two parts here. Now I'm going to lower them in and see if we're ready. It's kind of hard to tell through the jar, but the surface is sweating a little, but I think we're still a little cool. So I'm just going to turn the heat up slightly. The Red Rat video recommends going to about 100 degrees Celsius which is, you know, the boiling point of water. I, they also, uh, when they did it, they took a couple of minutes in the acetone to do their uh, resurfacing. I found that I think if you get it a little warmer, you can have the acetone vapor kind of just pass by the parts right as it goes and smooth it out a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to throw a little more acetone in the jar here with my mask on. What we're doing right now is filling the jar, the bottom of the jar, with acetone vapors. Um, as long as we don't overheat the acetone, it is heavier, well, it gets more dense than air, so it'll stay in the jar. I mean, right now I have my mask off for a second to talk, and the room doesn't smell like acetone or anything. It's all contained. So we just want to be mindful of that while we're doing this, that we don't get it too hot or get too much acetone in there at once and start to have you know, more uh, flammable acetone vapors floating around the room than we want. Add a little more. 
And you can hear it zizzling a little bit when it hits the surface of the jar there. So we're getting pretty close. I mean, it, it is starting to smooth out there. It's kind of hard to tell with the camera, but this is working. It'll, once we get going, kind of build momentum, it'll go faster because it'll be warmer. And we'll have more acetone vapor built up in there. We're just going to let this sit for a minute until I'm happy with it. We're pretty close, actually. So I want to make sure the knee pads are smooth. So I'm going to pull these parts out so you guys can get a uh, view of what's going on here. It actually is pretty impressive what happens. So, as you can see right now, they're real shiny because the surface is slightly liquefied. And they are pretty smooth. I think they're, they're pretty much good to go, actually. Um, from the front, they're pretty smooth. Knee pads are pretty good there. Sorry for the shaky cam, but... Yeah, the only thing that's got a little rib left is the top surface, which is okay, because that's going to get a joint part glued over it anyway. So I'm just going to take these parts over to my holding area here. And I'm going to set you down right there, my faithful viewer. Try out the barf there. I'm just going to slide the parts off on the tin foil onto my uh, countertop here so they can cool. They're not hot, but I just don't want to you know, accidentally get my finger on them or something. So that's pretty much it. We're just going to do it um, a lot now. I have parts on skewers too, so I'll just lower them in and hold them above the uh, vapor. I'm going to make sure I put a glove on for that this time, because I actually did uh, get a little bit of skin irritation from that last time. That wasn't so fun. But that's kind of the plan, so uh, watch out when we do a whole bunch of parts. So that's pretty much it. Um, as you can see, all the parts are here. They all look pretty shiny now in the light, and it's going to take them uh, a couple hours to dry. You know, all the solvent has to kind of evaporate off and the surface harden again. And when they're done, the surface is, um, it feels almost like it's got an enamel coating on it. It's really pretty cool. So, uh, like I said, you know, this is not super hard or scary. You just have to, you know, know what you're doing ahead of time. and pay attention and have the right tools. So hope this has been informational for you. Um, I'm having a lot of fun making these guys and I'm glad that people seem to be enjoying them. As you can see, we're making multiple all arounds. So while I don't have a you know real date or anything yet, I'll say that there definitely is an all around release on the horizon. So keep your eyes peeled to prometheusrising.net. Follow me on Twitter, prometheum5.com. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Prometheum5 and follow me on Tumblr at Prometheum5. Basically, basically all the places that you want to follow me besides like Pinterest. I don't, I don't have a Pinterest yet, but anything else, you know, follow me. Keep an eye out for pictures of completed figures, what's on deck, what I'm working on, and all that good stuff. So, thanks for watching.